And so we say hi again, everybody, and we welcome you to a, another edition, the playoff edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Rich Kincaid, joined by the head football coach at North Farmington High School, John Herstein, the undefeated head coach <laughs> of the North Farmington Raiders. Congratulations Thank you very on your much, season. Thank you. See them, yep. the, uh, the first undefeated Raider team uh, in 41 years. The yeah. 1978 team was undefeated, actually went to the uh, state championship that year, but uh, yep. for 41 years, uh, now you, you've set the standard. Yeah, hopefully we can make it to the state finals. That would be something. <laughs> now, we were talking about it uh, before uh, before we uh, uh, began the program here today. How many wins does it take to win a state championship? It'll take five wins to win the state championship. So, uh, And as, as you pointed out, and correctly so, you've got U of D Jesuit to, to open the playoffs. That's yep. coming up on Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock kickoff at Ron Holland uh, Field. The, the opponents now are, are, are more difficult than you're likely to see during the course of the regular season. Yeah, well, because they're all in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly right. The uh, anytime you make the playoffs, you can play good competition. And this week we're playing a team out of the uh, Catholic League, uh, U of D, and they're a good team, well coached, and uh, you know it's going to be a good challenge. Let's talk about the uh, Jesuits in a moment. First, let's uh, look back on uh, on the season. Let's go back a couple of weeks to that uh, big game against uh, Farmington High School. Yeah. Seen that I've never seen anything like. I mean, they were lined up two and three deep along the fence that runs the uh, perimeter of the track outside the football stadium. Both stands on, on the uh, west side and the east side were, were, were filled. What an atmosphere it was, and it turned out to be a terrific football game. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, that's one of the good, great things about high school football is, you know, the whole community aspect and people coming out to support both teams and uh, all the kids and the staff, you know, I, I don't think you could ask for anything better. Right, absolutely. It really came <coughs> down to uh, two plays in that football game. The first one very early on. Farmington went three and out on their first possession, decided to punt, and you blocked it, and that's a touchdown as it's recovered in the end zone by, I believe, it was who, who did recover? Andrew it, Dooley. Uh, Andrew Dooley. Andrew exactly. Dooley, yes. yeah. Yeah, he, uh, you know, something that we've worked on, and we thought we might be able to get after it, and uh, it just kind of opened up, so he was able to block it, then recover it. Heck of a play by the young man. And the other key play after Farmington had tied the score just before halftime. It was a 7-7 football game rather early in the third quarter, and uh, John Burnett found a hole on the left side. It looked like a, a quick hitter, a play maybe designed to gain two, three yards, and he took it 58 yards to the house. Yeah, you know, the line blocked it really well. John saw the opening, was able to take off for the end zone, and... The way they're defending us gave us an opportunity, so worked out nice. You had uh, senior night against uh, Ypsilanti, <laughs> uh, the, the rail splitters, Ypsilanti Lincoln, on uh, Friday night. 22 seniors uh, honored uh, prior to that football game. It's a large graduating class. Yeah. We could touch on that a little bit. But uh, what struck me is they asked uh, each of the young men what their fondest football <laughs> memory was, and I think 18 of those 22 guys had beating Farmington. Well. Yeah, well, you know, obviously it's a big moment for them. Uh, f first time they've beaten them in a number of years. So... You know, something that they're all really excited about, and I think it'll be something that'll stick with them for many years to come. What are your thoughts on your first senior class? It, they've been awesome. They've uh, bought in, really went all out, you know, been all those things that you'd want in athletes. And, uh, you know, you're going to miss a lot of them. They're a good, talented group of kids. A high-intensity football game against Farmington. I'd be remiss, though, if I didn't ask you about the, the, the startling, startlingly high number of personal foul flags that we saw in that, in that football game. Yeah, you know, I think the refs were calling it real tight. They weren't going to take any nonsense uh, from either team. So, you know, they started off calling it whenever a kid spoke up or said something or did anything that may violate the rule, and they just called it both ways. You closed it out uh, last Friday night with a 46-22 to 22 victory over uh, the, the team we just uh, mentioned, Ypsilanti, uh, Ypsilanti Lincoln. Yeah. They gave you a pretty good battle there in that, uh, that first half. Uh, it was 22-21 uh, for, for a long time. Every time you scored, it seemed uh, Lincoln would come back and, and score one of their own. The, 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 the thing that you, you think about when you're calling a game like that is that, well, maybe North Farmington is looking past the regular season finale and looking forward to the playoffs. You know, I think the kids were as excited for it. We kind of gave them some opportunities. Obviously, the defensive touchdown we gave up gave them a chance to get back into it. And uh, we definitely, we, we, didn't, we didn't execute the way we wanted to on offense at the start. They're a good team, though. Despite their record, they, we thought they had some, some good talent. They got a kid who's committed to Michigan and, uh, and another really uh, good back and so on. So, you know, for us, it was a matter of just kind of finding our rhythm and, and figuring out how they played and what we could do and uh, making those adjustments. The turning point of that ball game may have been the fake punt, which was run successfully <laughs> by, uh, by Lincoln. And one of you guys, and I can't remember who it is, uh, I mean, ran him down uh, at the one-yard line. Otherwise, it's, a, it's another touchdown on, on the board for them. And then after you stop him at the one, goal line stand time, and that was, uh, it was magnificent. Yeah, so that was actually Eddie Lenton who ran him down, uh, plays a uh, defensive back and receiver for us. Um, they 
kind of caught us off guard with that, I guess. We were slightly misaligned. They got around the corner, and uh, you know, I think that shows a lot with the character of the program and what we're trying to develop. Guys that never give up, that fight till the end, that try their hardest in everything that they do. And so Ed was able to, you know, go down there and get the tackle. And then the defense came up huge, getting a stop. You know, the bend don't break mentality, make them earn every yard, every touchdown. Absolutely. So they were one step away from a touchdown. They don't get it. And uh, and after that, you shut them down pretty good. You win the football game, 46 to 22. Just about hitting your season average in points, which uh, yeah. turns out to be 44. So you, you're obviously happy about that. You finish the season with a team that scores on average 44 points a game and a defense uh, to match. You, know, you you allowed on average 12 points a game this season. Oh, you know, those are great statistics. You know, that's something that we're excited about. We feel like, the, you know, we're definitely getting better and better as the season went on with the way the guys execute on offense and the understanding of how they fit on defense and our execution there and, and even in special teams. How's your team uh, right now heading into, into the postseason? Now, what's, the, what's the mood? What's the attitude? They're excited. You know, I thought we had a really good practice yesterday, and I'm anticipating the same thing today. Uh, it's a new opportunity for them to go out and show what they can do against other guys in the state. And, you know, it's a first experience for some of them. But I don't sense that they're nervous at all. I think they're just excited to continue to play football. Seems to me that the guys that we have at North, they like playing football. They want to play as many games as they can and, and compete whenever possible. Does the preparation change at all now that it's, uh, it's playoff time? Uh, not really. You know, it's the same, same method that we go through for every team, the way we break down, the way we study. Obviously, you know, they're going to get our undivided attention just like, the other teams in the past, but this is a must win. Uh -huh. If you want to continue to go on, you got to win. Exactly. Tell us about you, D. Jesuit. I don't know that <laughs> much about them other than the fact that they were 6-3 they were and three and they're playing you in the first round. Yeah, so they're a 6-3 and three team. They, uh, they, they've played against six uh, playoff opponents already. Mm -hmm. So they're battle-tested. They play in the Catholic League. Uh, they've played tough games against the likes of CC, Brother Rice, and De La Salle. Um, not winning them, but playing really tough against all of those teams, which shows you they're, they're capable. You know, I think it'll be a heck of a game. I'm excited to see what our guys do. Absolutely. We all know they play a good brand of football over there in the Catholic League. Yep, they do. I think they pride themselves on, the, on their physicality, but, I, you know, I think we can match. All right. Who's got to come up big for you here in the postseason? Well, I, obviously, quarterbacks got to continue to play great, and uh, the receivers and the running backs. Uh, on defense, you know, I think our linebacking core is really good and our secondary can, can stay with guys. So, uh, you know, guys that need to get the job done, it's going to be a combination of everybody. The whole team is going to have to step up, be focused, and work on doing their one of 11. Jacob Busamro finished with 22 touchdown passes uh, this season. And I may not have updated that. He may have wound up with, uh, with 23. Yeah. But, I mean, what a tremendous year for the uh, transfer from Cranbrook. I mean, yeah. unbelievable, <laughs> really. I mean, fantastic year for him. Uh, he, back to some of those seniors that he's able to throw the ball to and so on. Those guys have done a great job. He's developed quite a rapport with them and, and trusting them and where they're going to be. And he's got a very accurate arm. Um, you know, I think makes for a great year. All right. If you win uh, the football game against the uh, Jesuit, uh, the way this district is uh, set up, you've got an opportunity for a rematch against Farmington yeah. in week two. That'd be something, you know. That'd be really great. Have them come back over here, play again. Uh, you know, I'd, be, I'd welcome that. But, you know, just get through this game right now. Right. That's the big, big key, win this one. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right, coach of the North Farmington Raiders, uh, John Herstein, joining us here on Coach's Corner. We'll take a break, and uh, we'll be back to talk some more football, this time from the Farmington Falcons perspective. That's coming up here on TV10. A lot of explanations for the school colors. The most commonly known one is that they asked as is North Farm's tradition, the students what they wanted. So they asked the kids at Dunkel, who were going to be the first kids at North, and they voted for brown and gold. But the vote was sort of rigged by the teachers who were at Dunkel, because many of them went to a university here in Michigan and pushed the kids to vote for those colors, brown and gold, which was Western Michigan. As crazy as we must think those colors are now, I guess they were the hot, trending shades of mid-century modern 1960s design. There's Sydney Raider, who was that cartoon character, and it was the character was El Cid. Uh, the El Cid idea was recommended by our first football coach, who said, "Well, what is a Raider? What is a Raider?" And he, and he said, "Well, it's kind of like that 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 El Cid, the conquistador kind of character." But the name Raider is a more interesting story. 
So that nickname was given to us by the newspaper. So you can find the newspaper article that says North Farmington McKenzie's Raiders will go for an undefeated season today. McKenzie was the name of our first football coach, who was a vice principal. So the newspaper referred to the team as McKenzie's Raiders after our TV show that lasted one season, and it stuck. And it's been Raiders ever since. And welcome back to Coach's Corner, joined now by the head football coach at Farmington High School, Corey Sorot, whose team opened with a, a nifty 7-0 and run, uh, concluded their regular season with a loss against the North Farmington Raiders, 13-9, in what uh, really was, uh, Coach, a, a terrific football game. A two plays cost you in that one, the, the block punt early on, and then uh, one of their running backs, John Burnett, got, uh, got, uh, got away early in the uh, well, middle of the third quarter, 58-yard touchdown, and that uh, those two plays decided the entire football game. Yeah, I, I disagree. I think that those two plays were big, but football game's got 100-something plays mm -hmm. in it. We made a lot of mistakes in other plays. Those were obviously big plays that, that really, you know, took over the football game, but we had our opportunities, and we just didn't play very well. well we one, way to, one way to look at it, though, is that the, your defense held their offense to one touchdown uh, in the game, and I think if you'd have been given that information before the game, you'd, you'd have certainly taken it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think our kids played tough. Um, we played really good defense, struggled to move the ball on offense, made a lot of mistakes, shot ourselves on the foot often. Um, you know, overall, it was, a, it was a great atmosphere. We played hard. You know, we didn't come up on top, but we learned from it, and we're moving on. Uh, speaking of that atmosphere, I, I know myself, I've never seen anything like it uh, here in the, uh, in the school district where you had both the stands on both sides of the field were packed and they were lined up two and three deep around the, the fencing, around the perimeter of the field. I mean, it, you talk about atmosphere, that was, uh, that's really what it's all about. It was, it was very cool. Um, you know, when you're coaching the game, you don't really pay attention much to that. But at halftime, I sort of, you know, came out and, and could see it and was, was blown away a little bit. So, you know, we were focused on playing the football game, but the atmosphere was, you could feel it. It was electric. You can tell that, uh, once again, there, there's a rivalry in town, and we'll, we'll have that moving forward. For sure. Um, you know, it was a close game. We didn't win it. We're not happy we didn't win it, but, you know, we'll have many opportunities in the future, possibly even in the playoffs. We'll Ex see. Well, exactly right. The way the district is, uh, is set up, if uh, you win... Uh, your first game, if North Farmington wins uh, their first games, it's, it's rematch time right here at, uh, at, uh, at North Farmington. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, you know, we would love to have that happen, but obviously we got a really, really difficult opponent in the first round with Oak Park, um, one of the best teams in the area, one of the best teams in the state. We focus solely on them. Um, you know, it would be icing on the cake to get to come play back here again next week. Um, and if we, if we are able to do so, it means we beat a really good football team in Oak Park. So. And you talk about uh, Oak Park. Really, all I know about them right now is that they're eight and one. Uh, they uh, they won their division in the OAA. Uh, uh, looks like a terrific football team. Ninety-five uh, playoff points. Uh, your world. What what can you tell us about uh, the Oak Park Knights? Um, well, they're loaded. They're loaded with talent. They have double-digit Division One kids on their team. Um, one of the biggest football teams I've ever seen. Um, you know, they're one of the better teams in the area. They won the OAA White. They play one level higher than us in the OAA. Right. Um, they did win that, that conference. Uh, they play a lot of playoff teams. I think they beat five playoff football teams this year. Um, just a really good football team. Very athletic, very well coached, talented. Um, you know, we're in for battle. Well, at some point in the playoffs, you're going to have to play a team like Oak Park. Absolutely. I guess you could say, well, we're, we're going to get them out of the way in the first week. And we really don't have any choice. I mean, you don't really get a, you don't really, you know, get a choice on who you draw. It's not the best draw we've ever gotten, but... You know, we're ready to play. Our kids are tough, and we've been having a good week of practice so far, and we're just going to keep rolling. Some people were looking at that draw saying, you, you really got the uh, short end of the stick, as it were. Uh, you know, maybe about as bad a draw as you could possibly have gotten. Uh, it's geographic. There's nothing, you know, they, they plot out the map with, with, uh, with map points. They don't know who those teams are. And, mm -hmm. yeah, we didn't get a very good draw, but... Again, that's nothing that we can control. We're just going to go and prepare for Oak Park and, and play a tough football team. How do you beat them? Um, discipline. We got to play physical. Um, they're definitely one of the more physical football teams that we're going to see, or I've seen in a long time. Um, but we just got to be disciplined. We got a couple wrinkles that I think can hurt them, and you know we can't shoot ourselves in the foot like we did in our last game, and, and we just got to play you know borderline perfect football game to win it. Because uh, things uh, fell through with respect to the final week of the regular season, and you you didn't have a game, and you were supposed to play at home, you kind of got kind of got cheated out of senior night, and you've got 29 seniors on on your roster that are uh, you didn't get a chance to say goodbye to in a formal setting. 
Yeah, it's been a weird year. You know, we had uh, the forfeit in our homecoming, right? Our homecoming game. We didn't get that um, that experience. We weren't able to have a senior night on Friday night. We did do it on our JV game last week, so we honored our seniors. But you know, as much as it's been a really awesome year, it's been a weird year. A lot of that stuff being out of our control. Um, we're just excited that we're still playing football. Absolutely. So there's a lot of teams in the state of Michigan and around the country that aren't playing football anymore, and we're just embracing the fact that you know we got more practices and and then one guaranteed more game and just fighting through, hoping we can continue to play some more football. 29 seniors, that's, that's a lot of seniors to, uh, to uh, graduate. No doubt, we're losing a lot of kids. Um, and we're not looking at next year yet, but we, we got a lot of kids that need to step up. But you know, I hope we get to just continue to play football. I love my group of kids, I love our seniors, I love everybody on our team. Um, you know, we're just practicing hard and hoping we get to continue to, to play. Who are, who are you going to remember most from this team? I know you, you try to remember all the kids, but when you look back on this team maybe in five years, who do you, who do you think is still going to be in your memory? I, I think all of them. I mean, I know you said you remember all of them. Um, I think you remember groups more than individuals. I mean, this is a team sport. Um, you know, we're together sometimes more than we're with our families. Right. So it's, it's one big fan. We break out every day of practice and every game saying family, and we mean it. Um, so I think, I think these kids, especially with the kids who came over from Harrison, um, having this big, big a group of seniors is, is something I'll remember for sure. Absolutely. And it is, has this been your funnest year, going 7-1 the way you have yeah. and yeah. establishing that rivalry with North Farmington? Football's fun. I mean, that's why we do it. So right. whether you're winning or you're losing, you're enjoying, uh, you're enjoying preparing and, and coaching your kids and being with your kids. So uh, we've had a great year. We've had a fun year. Um, we're just going to keep it rolling. I, I enjoy being with our kids no matter what's happening. There we go. All right, so it is Farmington. The Falcons on the road against Oak Park, the Knights. That game will be coming up on Friday. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff, by the way, so, so be mindful of that as you head on over. Normally we start at 7 o'clock. The playoff game this Friday night at Oak Park, 6 o'clock kickoff. We've been joined by Coach Corey Sorocha, the Farmington Falcons coach. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Best of luck to you. Absolutely. Thank All you. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Coach's Corner, our playoff edition. Hopefully we'll have a... Playoff edition number two. We'll uh, see. It all depends on the games this weekend. Again, Farmington on the road against Oak Park. North Farmington at home on Saturday against Detroit Jesuit. For our entire staff, my name is Rich Kincaid. Thanks for joining us here on Coach's Corner.